Hey guys, Ken Smith. So this is part three of my trip to OHIV. <clears throat> Excuse me, losing my voice. Um, and shout out to Theral, T-H-E-R-R-E-L-L. -L. I think that's Theral Thomas for saying something to me in a comment on the first video. He said, hey, tell us a little bit about how to run the lake. And that's funny because I looked for a video about how to run the lake before I went out there and couldn't find one, but talked to some guys who helped me out. So the first part of this video, I'm just gonna walk you through what I learned and how to run the lake with a little bit of Google Earth uh, footage. So check it out. Okay guys, just to give you a sense of the lake and running the lake. So this is Google Earth. Now, note when I'm, so the lake is 14 feet low today. This imagery is from February of 2017 when the lake was about another 20 feet lower, 18, 20 feet lower than where it is even today. So we're going out of Concho, which is kind of right in the middle of the lake. I'm going to double zoom it here. So there's the first zoom, and then we'll pull it in even tighter. So you'll see where it says Colorado River, that if you come out of there, coming down, and then just work your way down the map just a little bit, that's the, that's the launch ramp. So if you come out of there and go straight across, you're going up to Colorado. If you come out of there to the left, and I'm going to show you what I did, you're going up to Concho. If you go right or up and then right, you're going back towards the dam. So my experience going towards the dam was, and you see that I even got a yellow arrow pointed, that, that hump out there, all of that stuff has mesquite trees on it. So anywhere it's less than about 17 or 18 feet deep, there's mesquite bushes sticking out of the water. So it's, it's incredibly easy to me to run going that direction. And everybody I had talked to, now again, I'm not an expert. I, this is only my, I spent three days there, but I talked to several guys. And basically what they said was, yeah, the main lake, just don't cut the point short because you got those mesquite bushes and other various and sundry rocks and things. You know, just follow your maps, the nav maps and the Lake Master maps both appear very accurate down on the main lake. So going there, that direction, really not a problem. The challenge is start being if you're going to try to go up either one of the rivers. So let's take a little closer look at those. So first off, just note, if you're going up to Colorado, so there's two ramps there. There's one on the left and there's one on the point. If you come off the one on the point and go straight out right now, that looks like open water. And it relatively is. I didn't see any timber out there other than what you're going to see on your left, which is that, again, that 17, 18 feet and shallower water. I ran straight across what you see as a point right there because, you know, there's 18, 20 feet of water sitting all the way across there. Now, I also then ran to the Concho, which now, having looked at this map and having talked to a few guys, I probably didn't do it the proper way. I got away with it, and I really didn't feel too spooked because I idled part of it with side scan. But kind of here's how I did it. So, so running up either the Colorado or running up the Concho, these are the routes I took. Now, knowing what I know now, that bottom route was probably not terribly safe because about where that arrow points, there's some standing timber out there. So I kind of ran across there with it trimmed pretty high. Even though it's pretty deep water, there's some standing timber out there. And I was a little puckered up until I got to where the map showed me back in the actual channel. That was kind of fuzzy on my Lake Master map. Later on my Navionics map, it made a little bit more sense to me. The proper way to get into the river would have been to run up like I did into the Colorado and loop back down, but that looked more difficult to me at the time. But again, I kind of got away with it. So then when I ran between the rivers, this is roughly the route I took. I just kind of followed my map. I actually had both maps pulled up. I had my Lake Master on my Hummingbird and my Navionics map on my Garmin. And I just kind of split them and ran right through the middle, kept it in the channel. And there is some scattered timber, not a lot, 8, 10, 15 stumps out there that you'll see. But it looked to me like the channel is a good 30 to 100 yards wide. So it, it really didn't spook me out too much running across there. And I don't think it will you guys either. Once you get in the river, it's really comfortable. Other than a spot about 5 miles above the big bridge in the Concho, if you look... There looks like there's an underwater dam up there if you look at the old Google Earth uh, data. I didn't put it in here, but it, it looks spooky, so check that for yourself if you're going to go more than three or four miles above that uh, the bridge up the Concho River. So really the only place that kind of wigged me out with this little stretch, probably uh, half a mile to a mile long, where you go into the Concho River. And there's, there's some standing timber out there. You'll see it. I bumped one idling. 
and it was the only place I really was not terribly comfortable. I did run it using my maps, and I think most of us will too. But just know that of everything I looked at, this was probably the only really place that kind of puckered me up running the lake, except for maybe one other thing I'm going to show you right now. Okay, so I found this on the map after I got back because I started really looking at Google Earth hard once I kind of had a feel for the lake. And 2.36 miles, roughly, above that bridge on the Concho River, I find this image. Now, I didn't go up this far, didn't go nearly this far up, but I might in practice just look around and I'm sure somebody else is going to. That sure looks like a low water dam to me. So one of you locals, if that's what that is, please let us know and let us know how far under the water it is where we are now so nobody goes up there and tears the lower unit off or hurts themselves. So please somebody comment and tell us exactly what that is. Okay guys, let's do our spark drawing for the week. And I just checked by the way, so we have a new leader in the clubhouse. So remember there's uh, 10 lakes where we have a $2,000 bounty for the biggest fish that's entered into share lunker. So it has to be eight or bigger and approved for the year. There's a 950 at Amstead. There's an 1119 at Fork. There's a 1056 at Rayburn, which is my fish. And just in the last week or two, Brandon Brousset, posted an 884 out of Palestine. So he immediately won 250 for posting that fish and he's in the lead for the 2000 bucks at the end of the year. There's nobody at Cedar Creek, no Texoma, no Conroe, no Ray Roberts, no Toledo Bend. So those, I think I just counted five lakes and no Falcon. So six of our 10 lakes, nobody's weighed an eight pounder uh, to try to win that 2000 bucks. So let's do our quick drawing right here. And oops, somebody jumped out of the bowl and somebody else jumped out of the boat. Uh, let's go right there to the middle and we'll pull out that name right there. Cole Brewer out of Aubrey, Texas. Cole, you're going to get an envelope that says rewards on it somewhere in the next couple of weeks. Don't throw it away. It's a $250 gift certificate from your friends at Spark Energy or gift card. So thank you for either being a Spark Energy customer or spending the $75 to join the Spark affiliate program. Tell you what, before we finish this, I think we're going to give money away to about half of everybody between the Big Bass Awards, the Bass Champs Awards, and the drawings every week. About half everybody that, that's entered this year. So, so thanks for that. Uh, let's jump right back to the fishing right here, guys. Because I don't remember exactly where this was. I believe this is up to Colorado, but it looks relatively, actually looks very, very similar both ways. And I'll tell you, it's, it looked great. Um, I didn't see near the bait fish I saw on the main lake, and you're going to see here, I obviously didn't get near as many bites up there, but good gosh, it looked good, and for an East Texas boy, it was a lot of fun, but, um, well, I'll leave it to decide what you're going to do for yourself in practice, but obviously I had a bunch more bites on another part of the lake, and the bites I did have, as you're going to see here, were not terribly exciting. Well, not exactly what I came up here looking for. Flipping bite though. On the Nirvana Prawn. I don't know how well you can see that, but there's a whole bunch of this shallow bank grass. They call it hydrilla. It doesn't look like hydrilla to me, but uh, it, it is all down these banks. And uh, the water is in the 80s, it's hot but there's already all kind of bait up around it. And even though I know there's nothing up there, I still had to go 150 yards down through there with a whopper plopper. But I can see if this water cools off, that could be a player right there. That's really interesting, you can see that. Now I've heard tell from guys down Somewhere on the lake, I say down, somewhere on the lake, saying they're seeing it real pretty and green. I haven't seen any pretty green grass yet. I've seen all kind of that browny, dead looking. But there's obviously bait all around it, which means there should be fish all around it. So just a little, little something I've observed. There's all kinds of flats with that stuff all over it. It's all, the deepest I've seen, the edge of this is about five feet. And that's the deepest I've seen, an edge. That's not true. Uh, down by the dam, right by the dam, I saw some that tapered off into 11, 12 feet of water. 
and uh, I spent probably two hours out there flipping it and never had a swing but gosh that should get right too so we'll see well let's go to catching I'm tired of fishing I'm ready to catch Sir? I said I'm tired of fishing I'm ready to go to catch him. There ain't much to him, but he bit. Uh, do what? I said there ain't much to him, but he bit. As a crow flies, I'm seven miles up the river from the launch. I'm gonna say probably 14 or 15, you know, doing this. I'm up here uh, off the Lake Master map. Where I am, there is no more Lake Master map. The water's got a lot of color up here. Uh, where I'm sitting right now, the uh, the center of the center of the river, the bottom of the channel, is only about nine and a half feet deep. So it's come way, way shallow. I've seen bait all the way up here, but in Gar, uh, but there's a, there's a lot more color up here. Uh, the water temps everywhere mid to high 80s and i was just wanting to get a you know see how far you could get away up here and look around i'm gonna fish a little bit but not very much i don't imagine i'm gonna get bit but you never know up here but the one thing i'll say is the lake's gonna fish small uh, it's just not that big matter of fact so i've run all the way to the dam uh over to elm to the back of elm back to the launch all the way up the concho about well uh on trip log six miles above the bridge i don't know how far that is but it's a long way and now all the way up here and i'm still in the same 32 gallon uh tank of gas i've got a 10 gallon spare on my side so i've still not burned 32 gallons of gas so it's not a real big lake um you know what i'll just close with that so i unless i catch some more up here i've really not caught them very good but uh, I've run across a bunch of folks, a bunch of locals. Uh, I've been posting in the uh, Lubbock Facebook page, Lubbock Bass Fishing page, Facebook page. So uh, I, I know several guys out here, several guys know me and we've talked and um, the fishing is really off, but they said, you know, mid-October is gonna be a whole different ball game. So it really doesn't matter what you did or didn't catch uh, right now before out ahead of this tournament. They said it's gonna get good and it's gonna get right. They said it could be one literally from the dam. They didn't say this far up, but up the rivers, they said it could be just about anywhere. And I really think it's kind of, there's going to be kind of whatever you want to do. I, my sense is uh, it's going to be hard to deep, beat deep structure fishermen down on the south end. Uh, there's just, you know, you saw those schooling fish. There's such a, there's just such a numbers of fish down there. Now remember the lake's a little weird. I think I got this right. So 14 to 18 inches, you can only keep two. The other three gotta be above 18 inches. But I'm gonna tell you right now, you're not gonna be able to win this tournament keeping 14 inch fish. This, even as crowded as it's gonna fish, it's gonna take over 50 pounds to win this tournament. I, 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 did, I, have, I don't have footage of it, but I saw a guy catch a big one out of schooling fish. Uh, boy, that lens is dirty. Uh, you guys saw me down there catching those schooling fish, and I saw a guy throw a whopper plopper right across him. And I don't know how big it was, but he held it at his waist, and it dang near touched the floor. We were pretty far along apart, but it was a largemouth. I could tell what it was. There's some great big ones in here. I've not caught any, but again, I've been riding and looking, and I've done a bunch of flipping up here today, and I've not had a bite, but I still think that's something that might work too. So... Uh, I've had one bite today. It's Sunday. It's uh, it's 10:30, and I caught that fish. I think on my first cast, which you guys, well, here it is right here. I believe that's my first cast. I don't, I'm working off of memory. I believe that was my first cast of the day. So I tell you what, there's a lot of dove hunters. There's been sound like a small war uh, yesterday morning, but uh, oh well. You know, I've enjoyed being over here. It's been quite an adventure, and uh, again, I think it's going to be a whack 'em fest. 
when we get back up here uh, over here uh, so hopefully that helped you guys a little bit of overview of the lake most of the lake is pretty clear and i didn't say this but coming up to colorado there's actually good water clarity for a long ways there's one big sweeping left hand bend if you look at the map that then it goes about a mile in one direction i don't remember which direction it is but you come through a big sweeping corner and it takes a left and right there's where this water color changed back below that down the lake the water color is actually pretty clear so uh, but, but man, I just hadn't caught them up here. I hadn't caught them at all. I mean, I caught the, all those schooling fish and I caught a, a bunch of fish dragging on the south end, but they're just little fish. But, you know, again, that could all change. I've got about 10 spots marked just graphing and seeing schools of fish where I want to go back and check later. But I really didn't want to spend time on because I wanted to look around. But uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you all again later this week. Thank <laughs> you.